What's up, you bratty brawlers? My name is Matt Haslam. So you keep buttons down me because I want to tell you a story. A couple summers ago, me and my friends just packed up my hookah and we were looking for a place to smoke it. We decided to smoke it on these benches outside this chain link fence that surrounded the neighborhood pool. We were just smoking, enjoying the beautiful day while the children played in the pool. All of a sudden, this big middle-aged man from inside the pool started yelling at us for smoking the hookah. This guy tells us that his kids think that we're smoking weed, so we better take our fucking hookah somewhere else. This man is saying shit like, You better fucking move before I come make you move. I'm gonna kick your fucking ass. I can't satisfy my wife, so I have to take my aggression out on teenagers. He said something like that. Anyways, he was trying to tell us that we were being bad influence for his kids. He felt that the best way to get that across our minds was to scream at us like he's George Carlin in the Navy. First of all, this whole situation could have been avoided if his kids weren't retarded and thought we were smoking weed out of the hookah. We would never do that. It wastes way too much weed. Second of all, I don't think we were being bad influences. We didn't ask them if they wanted to smoke. We didn't try to convince them to smoke. The best way to get your kids to avoid doing something bad isn't to shelter them from it. It's for, to, you know... Be a good parent and tell him it's wrong. Anyway, this guy is yelling at us. Of course, my friend starts going crazy in his face. He starts yelling at him. They're face to face with nothing but a chain link fence in between them. Finally, this guy found his balls. Realized they were in his ass the whole time. And he finally gains enough courage to actually do something about it to, you know, back up all the shit talking he's doing. So he goes and tells the lifeguard on us. Then she has to come out and tell us to move. While the lifeguard was talking to us, telling us that we had to move, there were all these children in the pool just heckling us. There were a few of them. They just started making fun of us and stuff. We didn't say anything to them because you don't really know how to react when a 10 year old is yelling at you and making fun of you. Do you just yell back? Do you hit them? Do you whip it out to show who's the bigger man? I don't know. I didn't know how to react at the time. So we just kind of sat there and took it. While they were doing that, this one kid in particular just stood out to me. This one porky little fucking ham slab of a child was just annoying the shit out of me. The little fat fuck looked at me dead in the eyes and he said, You don't have any swag. He did this little fucking hand thing. What the fuck is that? This kid pissed me off so much for some reason. But the moment he said, you don't have any swag, the rest of my life just flashed in front of my eyes because I knew I had to get this butterball back. And I knew exactly what I had to do. I mean, I never had any motivation to make something out of myself until that moment. I knew I had to dedicate my life to being successful. I'm gonna stay in college, start working harder. I'm gonna get straight A's. I used those good grades to get my degree. I used that degree to get a kick-ass job. I used that kick-ass job to get a lot of money. I used all that money to become famous. Oh, but when I'm rich and famous, that's when my life starts to get on track. I'm going to go back to that same pool that I saw that tubby little swine at. I'm going to sit there and wait all day if I have to for Porky the Boy Wonder and his mom to come back. Then while him and his Jolly Rolls are making tidal waves in the pool, I'll be chatting with his mom. Charming her. Just so later that night when Blubber Belly gets up, goes to his mother's room to ask her why she keeps hiding the mayonnaise, he'll open the door slowly just to reveal me taking his mom to Pound Town. I'll be fucking the shit out of her while I slap the kid's mayonnaise all over her titties. He'll be too shocked to move as he stares at the horrific sight of me just opening up a new hole into his mother and wasting all of his mayonnaise. As he stands there not knowing what to do, I will turn to him. I'll look at him directly in the eyes and say, Swag. Then he waddles off crying tears of Krishka. This has been my dream since the incident happened. And kid, if you manage to stop eating butter long enough to watch this video, just know that I've kept my 4.0 GPA. I'm coming for your mother's ass.